to do real work and get more done, you find yourself attending a useless meeting. So you multitask to manage your overflowing email and you get interrupted by an IM from your boss, who also happens to be sitting in another useless meeting, multitasking on his emails and is responding to an IM to his boss who wants to know some trivial piece of information right away. Today, we get inundated with information overload, emails, attachments to read, links to check out, general company information, instant messages, Slack, wiki, meetings, presentations, people interrupting you for a quick question, and a whole lot more. How can you process all that information and build a good mental model to serve you? By the end of the day, we are exhausted, frustrated, and have no sense of purpose. Some catch up on real work after hours. That is unsustainable. Our personal lives reflect the same pattern. Another set of emails, incessant news, video options, and a whole slew of social media black holes. How do you solve this problem? First, let's establish some principles. The solution should be simple to implement. It doesn't have to be perfect. Awareness is a good start, so expect to iterate. And we should be able to see tangible results. Each person in your organization works approximately 40 hours a week. Unless you work for Tesla, in which case you might be thinking 80 hours. Each person plays a different role with a set of responsibilities against which he or she is measured. If you're an engineer, you should have deep expertise in your field and build products. If you're a manager, you should manage people and their work. If you're a business analyst, you should have a great grasp of business and guide product development. If you are the CEO, you should guide your company to the future at a strategic level. If you are a customer experience designer, you should interact with customers and design great experiences. Each role will have unique needs for breadth and depth of knowledge. If each hour of your work is a block, how should you arrange 40 blocks in your week to fulfill your responsibilities optimally? For any role, you should have no more than five topics of focus, and the fewer is even better because then your work is much more focused. Examples of these topics are technology work, team management, external interactions, creative work, self-improvement, accounting and finance, customer engagement, etc. Add one more topic to capture miscellaneous work that you might have to do. If you have the capability map of your organization, then you can use that to identify priority topics. Now, your job is to distribute your 40 blocks into each of these topics that you picked. This will help you in several ways. It'll help your manager understand your area of focus. It'll help you prioritize your time proportionally to these topics. It'll help you reduce your time on things that shouldn't matter. What's low on your priority may be high on somebody else's priority. And that's the whole point of bringing different roles and skills into the organization. Somebody else can handle other aspects as long as the company has full coverage on its capabilities. Information will hit you through multiple channels. Since you know what topics you should care about, you can filter out the rest to build your mental models. For example, before accepting a meeting invite, ask yourself if that meeting is relevant to your priority topic. If no, skip. If yes, plan on giving it your full attention without multitasking. Stop having FOMO or the fear of missing out. You will never know everything in your organization, so you might as well accept it and deal with it. That fear is debilitating. Simultaneously, you should also seek to eliminate simplify, automate, or delegate work. The sixth miscellaneous topic should consume less than 5% of your time to deal with the non-priority items. Your ability to function effectively within your organization is a shared responsibility between yourself and your organization. While you must focus and prioritize on your part, the organization must create an environment in which you can do your part with the least amount of friction. For example, there should be no expectation that you should attend all meetings that you're invited to. 
This topic of waste at work is important enough that it's been called out in many business journals such as McKinsey Quarterly and the Harvard Business Review. It's a real problem for knowledge workers today. The solution should not be that complicated. Once we have a clear grasp of what both the employee and the organization need to do. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. For a one page visual summary of this video, please sign up on my website. Thank you very much for giving me the motivation to do what I do.